So I'm going to give a little bit of an update because I haven't updated yet um, on what happened with the smart pill and the anorectal um, manometry test that I had ordered um, when I went to New York, uh, Connecticut. Um, and those tests were ordered by a neuro gastroenterologist there who I met with. I went there for a week. I'm here in Oregon. So it was a pretty, pretty big deal for us to fly out there. So he ordered these two tests um, here in my hometown. So that way I could take them. The smart pill test um, is no longer going to be offered. And I just found that out about a week ago. And I did have one of those done. So the smart pill test is much different than a camera endoscopy. A camera endoscopy is a pill that you swallow. It has a camera inside the pill and it takes photos of your innards as it goes down. A smart pill doesn't have a camera, but what it does do is it times, it gives you a time for how much time it spends in the upper gut, how much time it spends in the intestines or the large intestine. And it does this based on the pH balance of your stomach. So your stomach has a different pH than what your intestines, your small intestines do, and your large intestines is, are different. Um, it also shows those things as a result, so you can see what your pH is in each area. The problem with that test, and, and I don't really know what all the problems are, why they're pulling it, but my GI as well as um, a GI that I have that I consult with in, at Stanford um, in California don't believe that that's an accurate reading. So it read that things sit in my stomach for 15 hours, that my small intestine is almost normal, and that my large intestine is almost normal within an hour, give or take. Um, like my small intestine was a half hour slow I, I don't, because I don't have the classic symptoms of gastroparesis, which is vomiting, nausea, um, those kinds of things. I, I don't think that 15 hours is accurate. I will say that during the smart pill test, um, probably should have not partaken in a few things that may have slowed my gut down and that may have caused it to register out of whack. Um, we later did a SITS study, and this SITS study is little pills, it's a, it's a big pill that you swallow, it's a pill again, that you swallow, and it has these little radioactive X's and O's, so they'll show up in, a, in an x-ray. You swallow that, um, they take a photo on day one, or they just take a photo on day five. Mine wanted a photo on day one and day five. So it was out of my system on day five, which... I felt that my colon is actually the issue, that it's it's the thing that hurts because whenever I take, um, and my GI keeps asking that, he's like, how do you know it's your colon that hurts? It, it could be just referred pain because you'll have like, there'll be something wrong with your appendix and then your boob will hurt. So I do know how referred pain works. <laughs> um, and I do agree that, that is, it is strange that I would know that, hey, that's coming out of my colon. That's why it hurts. Um, but with somebody who's had diarrhea, gallbladder issues for the last, I don't know, 15 years, maybe I would know or understand like where that pain is coming from if I've had that pain before. But this is ongoing. So this is like, it's a different pain but it's ongoing in the same spot. Um, anyway, we're not gonna go into that. So there is definitely a motility issue with my gut that we found out. Um, and that explains a lot of the pain because there is a lot of pain that comes with gastroparesis. For the last several weeks, I've been just months I think weeks and I'm, I'm just like I can't imagine like how much time has passed because every time I get a doctor's appointment set up that's like in December and if, if it was in December and I had it set up for January or for May I would look at the calendar and kind of giggle to myself and be like ha 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 I won't be around by then you know we'll just see what happens <laughs> and I'm not joking like I I honestly think 
that from September up until probably May, I was living my life as if overdosing, you know, I, I would just wind up overdosing and they would just find my body at some point because I'm just trying to get some relief from my stomach. I'm just trying to be pain free for five seconds. Um, I will say this, I've seen some improvement. So I do know that part of this is post-infectious IBS, which is stems from the C. diff and the H. pylori and the SIBO that I all had at last year. No wonder I have post-infectious IBS. It's just like, no shit. Um, with all the infections that I had and that I had to get treated within a, like less than a year that happened. All those just bang, 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 back to back to back. Um, so I have seen some improvements. So at, I, I want to share some meds with you that I've used um, and that actually will be coming up in a video right after this. Uh, but I just wanted to update those of you uh, that have been watching, like what has been going on. I do have an appointment in June at the Mayo Clinic, June 2nd. Um, and I am hoping and praying that they do a few more tests that we haven't done. One of them being the camera endoscopy. Um, so that way we can see if there is any inflammation or um, markers of Crohn's. It's, it runs in my family. My dad has UC. Um, and so I'd like to see if, if that would explain some of the pain because my pain's not explained. My symptoms aren't truly explained by gastroparesis. They are and they aren't. So there's kind of those two dual fold things going on. Um, so, okay. Currently with the diagnosis of, of course, post-infectious IBS and of course, uh, gastroparesis is a diagnosis as well. So, um, yeah, that's what's going on. And in June, I will be heading to the Mayo Clinic to see uh, what else we can do and to try to get on some kind of a plan, you know, because I kind of feel like my doctor just threw Domperidone at me and was just like, here, take this. It'll fix everything. Nope. It did not. It did not fix everything. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what's going on. So that is the update. So I will make that video with meds that have helped because I know that there are a lot of people out there that have uh, stomach pain that this information actually might help. Um, and I hope it does. I hope it helps somebody. I hope somebody, you know, is watching these videos and gets something out of this. Cause like I've never had, I've never had stomach issues, never. At 23, 24, I had my gallbladder removed. Maybe I was a little older than that. I'm like 28. Yeesh. I think I was 27 or 28 when I had my gallbladder removed. Um, and then that just caused diarrhea after that. And so it, you know, the only problem that I ever had was the diarrhea issue in the morning. There's a really cool bird that just landed out in my back 40 and I have no idea what kind of bird it is. So I need to just like focus, focus, test, focus. Um, had diarrhea issues up until this SIBO hit with the infection. And then ever since then, for the last year and a half, it's been an absolute living hell. Um, I have pain 24 seven in my stomach. It does not go away. Like there is no break from this. Um, the only thing I've found that Ativan helps a ton. Uh, it's the only thing that I found that does knock out the pain, but I can't be on Ativan and it does it. Your system builds so, such a, a tolerance to it so quickly that there's, there's just no way I'd be able to manage with that, you know, um, taking it 24 seven, there's just no way. Anyway. Okay. I'll make the video about the meds, but that is the update. 